Hello everyone, Silent here. Welcome back to another episode of Decidedly Vanilla Season 5. Today, we're going to be continuing on our mega secret project that we've been working on for like the last three or so weeks. I don't even know, but it's been quite a while, quite the massive project. And that is, of course, our dual witch farm, multi-farm area. And we're going to have so many more farms in this area. It's going to be a center of amazing farms and it's just going to be really awesome. So we're going to be doing a ton more work on this place today. It's going to be kind of like an episode. Lots and lots of progress going to be happening today. Very, very excited. Uh, but first thing is first, if you did not see the last episode where we actually, you know, built up the witch farms and actually got this perimeter mostly installed, then definitely go check that, out, that episode out. Otherwise, you might be a bit lost on what's really going on. So if you want to know the full picture and the full story, definitely go watch that episode. It's going to be linked in the upper right and in the description down below for your convenience. But uh, yeah, I think without further ado, we should probably hop into it because we have so, so many things to do. So the first order of business is kind of catching you guys up to date with everything that has happened in between episodes. The main thing that has happened is additional perimeter work. So all of this over here used to be swamp lands, kind of like that over there. And the pickles worth uh, decided to go ahead and drain all the water, which is kind of amazing. This place looks uh, very strange and mysterious. I like it. I like it a lot. But yeah, he did all of this. All of this. Oh, look how deep this is. Did all of this without sponges. Crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> and I actually just raided an ocean monument on a stream for this exact same project. I had no idea who was doing this. So, uh, yeah, we just kind of came to a little bit of an agreement where I would do, like, these deep river areas with all the sponges that I just got. I think I got, like, two stacks or so of sponges from, like, four monuments. Doing pretty good there. And he's going to go ahead and get all these little edges, these, like, lowland areas. Because for these ones, all you really need to do is, like, fill it in with a layer of sand. And then that's it. Just remove the sand and you're good to go. So, yeah, that is going to help prevent all the different drowned spawns in this area. It's also going to help prevent fish and, you know, squid spawns so that we can make an even better squid farm in this area right here. And we might even get to building that squid farm today. I have no idea, but we have a lot of different stuff to do. So the main project for today is actually going to be getting the massive storage system in place that we need for all of our different farms. Of course, we need a storage system for the two witch farms, of course, because those are actually fully functional. And currently all the drops go up this massive hunk of, uh, you know, various blocks. <laughs> and that goes up to the upper area right here. Uh, so what we need to do is figure out the layout for a storage system down here, not just for the witch farms, not just for the potential squid farm, but also for all of the other farms that we're going to be building inside of this perimeter. And we have plans for at least, I think, six or seven different farms. Uh, an iron farm is one of those, like a 32 village, just kind of small iron farm, and then a whole bunch of different crop farms, maybe a passive animal farm. Lots of ideas rolling around for the different farms that we can build in this area. So yeah, we need to figure out a storage system for all of that stuff and get all of that built up in this episode. And again, this is going to be right beneath this thing up here. We will check this out later. This is actual. Uh, this is actually a build that is looking fantastic from the Pickles Wharf. Again, we will check all that out later. Looking very, very good though. So let me get a little bit of work done on this. I basically need to kind of figure out the height of the storage system. I might go down by like another three or so blocks just to give me a little bit of headroom for this. And then I need to figure out all the different farms, all the different items that we're going to be collecting from our farms and try and figure out some sort of layout for our storage system. All right, so it is now about an hour and a half or so later, and I have gotten a fair amount of the storage system planned out, and I came up with a really cool idea, as you can see right now, uh, for actually looking at the sunrise and the sunset through the storage system. I have no idea if we will actually be able to uh, turn that into reality, but I thought I would try it out. It looks amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, mind the jankiness. I don't have to do a single bit of decoration, so I'm going to leave it just as janky as need be, okay? So, yeah, I have been sitting here for a while planning out everything that I want to do, and there is a lot of things that we're going to try and cram into the storage system. So I guess let's just start from right here going around to the backside, shall we? So along this wall right here, we're going to have all of our witch farm drops. So as you can see, we got 
redstone, gunpowder, glowstone, uh, sugar, and then spider eyes, sticks, bottles, and ink. So that's gonna be fantastic. We're also going to have a shulker loaders for every one of those, and that is what this clay signifies right here. Uh, off to this side, we're gonna have, you know, 10 double chests for sugarcane storage. And if that's gonna be just fine, and we'll also have a shulker box loader right here. Uh, basically everywhere that there is a clay block, I am planning to have a shulker box loader. And we're gonna have one right here as well for our kelp blocks. Now kelp is kind of a weird one because like you get the actual kelp and then you get the dried kelp and then you get the dried kelp blocks. So I'm not sure how, how we're gonna deal with all that. Uh, so I'll come back and talk about that in a minute. We're also gonna have another shulker, bo shulker box loader right here for bamboo. Once 1.14 comes out, we're definitely gonna be building a bamboo farm, instant fuel, and that might be uh, used for our kelp farm as well. So that is cool. Moving over to this side over here, we have iron storage. So a full on 20 double chest for iron storage. And then we're gonna have a pickle farm, possibly a pickle rick farm. I don't really know if it's necessary, but it's something that we can put in this area and we'll have another shulker loader right there for it. Now, another thing that I wanna have, and this ties into our kelp and our bamboo farms, is actually an instant item repair system along the back wall. Since we're gonna be AFK so much, we might as well get ourselves a little bit of experience and maybe, you know, repair our items while we're here. So if we can smelt down a whole bunch of kelp, we can gain experience from that. We can use the bamboo, bamboo as fuel. We can get infinite fuel from it and we can gain experience. It's just gonna be overall very, very good. So yeah, I'm thinking we'll have maybe four or five uh, instant item repair furnaces on this back wall over here. I just need to work it out so that it's somewhat symmetrical because as you can see, that is not symmetrical and not acceptable. And then finally, <laughs> finally, finally, uh, we have AFK fish farm, stackable loot in AFK fish farm, non-stackable loot or stackable and non-stackable. A lot of different farms are gonna be built up in this area, so, so many, and there's even more that could in theory be built. So now that we have all the basic storage layout in place, I wanna go ahead and actually start using some of this. So right now we have ourselves eight water elevators right here in this back wall. And these are actually pre-sorted. So each one of these water elevators is actually sending up one type of item. And I need to send all of these into these chests right here. And then we can actually turn on the witch farms and start getting ourselves a few drops. But in order for you to really understand how we're gonna do that, I need to show you all the redstone down here and kind of show off the rest of this as well. It's a little bit strange from the outside looking in, just a tiny bit strange, but that's fine. We will never see it from out here. But anyway, as I was saying, we do have these eight water elevators going up through this, you know, giant hunk of blocks. And basically what they are doing is they are transporting up all of the different items from our witch farm. So as you can see, down here we have eight item elevators and all of these go into a little smart dropper circuit which then go straight up the item elevator. So we're already pre-sorting everything uh, down here which is absolutely perfect. And basically what these water columns are doing is they are going on display inside of this fantastic room right here which you guys will see a little bit later. Uh, but the output for all of these things is actually right up here at the top. So basically what I need to do is I need to extend these up by one more and dump them over the back so that all the items fall straight down into these hoppers. And then I need to bring these hoppers into this room into our storage system. So that alone isn't too big of a deal because we can just wrap these hoppers going directly in between the water streams and there shouldn't be any problems there, I don't think. So yeah, let me get that done for each one of these things and then we can actually turn on the witch farms and get ourselves some fantastic drops. So all of the item storage is now hooked up. And as you can see, we have a ton of items going through these item streams that basically go up and then they go over the back side and just kind of fall down into these hoppers and then go into their respective chests right here. So these farms have only been running for a few minutes and we already have ourselves a ton of drops. Really, really awesome. Super happy that we got ourselves a dual witch farm. Like these things are amazing. And yeah, as you can see, we got ourselves a ton of sticks and stuff. I kind of want to go all the way down to the bottom just to see how many items are really going through here. And yeah, as you can see, an absolute ton of stuff. So both of the farms converge right here to this hopper and then everything gets sorted right here. Looking very fine. I am enjoying this. Now there is one additional thing that is up over here and we have ourselves a little overflow. Now in here we have, oh wow, we have a surprising amount of stuff in here. So we have a ton of arrows, rotten flesh, bones, and for some reason a little bit of glowstone dust, that's strange. 
might have come through by accident. Anyway, the reason why we have those overflow things is because uh, Picklesworth actually built his farm off by one block. And that means that uh, slimes, little baby slimes, creepers, skeletons, zombies, they can all spawn on this one row right here. Now, all the baby slimes actually die because, you know, these things do a tiny bit of uh, suffocation when they shift. So we don't get any slime from this, but we do get those additional drops. Now, one thing I do want to do is actually kind of send these up to the storage system as well. I definitely want to keep the bones because, you know, tree farm needs all the bones ever. And even this little amount will definitely help an and, and itsy bitsy little bit. <laughs> but that is pretty low on my priorities. So we'll probably do that uh, sometime later on in this episode. I've been here for maybe 20 or so minutes and we already have ourselves like 10 stacks of all of these different loots. This is kind of amazing. I seriously love these farms. I This is like my first, uh, first proper mob farm on Java Edition besides the gold farm. It's just so nice. Java Edition rates and Java features are just so incredible. I love everything about this game. It's so, so very nice. Uh, but I am going to take a little bit of a break from the store system. To be fair, we haven't done a ton yet, but I don't want to go overkill and do everything before the Picklesworth sees it because I want to get his feedback and his suggestions for it. So I don't want to build the whole thing. Uh, building up the rest and hooking in all the different items is actually going to be super easy though. And honestly, it's more or less actually done because we don't have any of these other farms in place as of yet. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually... Uh, start clearing out the water down here. Now, this is actually fairly easy because we have the debug screen, we have ourselves some sponges, and we have ourselves some cheaty tactics. Basically, what we need to do is we need to figure out where the river biome ends and where the swamp begins. And one thing we could do to do this, and this is probably uh, the standard way, and that is to use the F3 screen. So if you look at the left side of the screen, kind of left and middle, you can see it says Minecraft Biome Swamp. If we go this way by a block, we are now in a river biome. And, you know, the river is where all the squid and the fishes and the drowns spawn. None of that stuff spawns in the swamp. So we technically don't need to drain out any swamp water, which is fantastic. And uh, yeah, so that is kind of the standard way, just using the F3 screen. However, there is a one feature in your video settings that makes this a whole lot easier, and that is a biome blend down here. What this does is it kind of blends together the biome border. So as you can see, everything is real smooth. You can see it's a very smooth transition from the light blue over there to the kind of pea yellow over there. So if we go ahead and we turn that all the way off, you can see it's a very harsh cut. Now, this is perfect. This, all of this yellow, Water right here is the swamp. All this wonderful light blue water right here is the river biome. So basically what I need to do is kind of just go around the edges like so and kind of just place down some grass as a temporary marker and drain out all the water inside of this barrier. Of course, I need to bring all these down to the bottom of the river. It is now several days later and I've done a ton of work on this water removal. All of the water everywhere in this perimeter is now completely removed. I just kind of need to go back and 
do a little bit of path blocking on these edges over here, but that's not too big of a deal. Now, this last little bit of water right here is, you know, gonna be for our squid farm, but I actually realized something that might potentially ruin our squid farm, and that is, if you're not within about 32 blocks of these guys, they're not actually gonna move, and that breaks about 99% of all squid farms ever. So, yeah, I'm thinking we'll need to set up a secondary AFK spot down here. That way we can AFK down here, get our drops from our witch farms, and also get ourselves some ink sacks. Uh, the squid farm just won't be functional and it won't be running if we're up there at our main AFK spot. So, it's going to be a little bit of hassle, but I definitely want to build a squid farm over here. I think it'll be definitely... Uh, worth it because this is like a prime perimeter. We might as well go ahead and build one. It won't take too long So I've also done a lot of work on the storage system up here And it probably looks quite a bit different than it did in the last clip or at least it should And that is because I finally met up with Picklesworth and we decided uh, Kind of wanted what we wanted to do with this upper level So we decided to just have ladders going up to the top floor because it's honestly not that big of a deal. It's just a couple ladders. And then we move the nether portal up here as well. And we came up with kind of a unique solution for the AFK fish farm. That's actually to elevate it a little bit. So up here is the AFK fish farm. And you can just stand right here, which is directly uh, center of our perimeter. So the best AFK spot that you can really get. And then, then you can just AFK fish all of the... Uh, all of the stackable goods will go over here. All the non-stackable goods will go over here. And I'm honestly pretty proud that I was able to shove all that redstone into the ceiling so well. Like, that's honestly not too bad. There's like an item filter up there, a non-stackable filter, and an item elevator. <laughs> it's not too bad whatsoever, honestly. A little bit ugly, but that's fine. A little bit ugly. So I also went ahead and made a custom shulker loader design for the system right here, specifically to fit the space that we had and to fit in this kind of one wide area. It's looking pretty cool, honestly. I'm, I'm kind of a fan of it. So the idea behind this one is you would bring shulker boxes with you when you visit the farm. Uh, that way, all the items that you're farming will go into the shulker boxes. They will get filled up and put into a chest, and then you can just grab them easily and go on your way when you're done. So that is kind of the basic idea. Now, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. <laughs> so if you want to turn the shulker loader on, uh, you just kind of flick the lever up. You can fill up the dispenser with shulker boxes, and then you place the first one right there. Not too big of a deal. And then once that gets completely filled up with, you know, redstone or whatever, it's going to get broken, go into the hopper right there, and then go into the chest, and the next one will be dispensed. So nice little system. Uh, for some reason, you cannot open shulker boxes if there's a hopper above it, which is like really weird. You can do it with chests, but I guess it kind of makes sense. But still, I wish you could. It would be rather nice. Hmm. You know, that's rather weird. Is that just a flaming arrow on the chest? I honestly can't tell how that's happening. I shot it with a flaming arrow. Oh, my bow's about to break as well, but weird. I have no idea how I did that, but it looks really cool. <laughs> Will it ever go away? The world may never know. So I think what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and load up a little bit of time lapse for you guys so that we can actually get this squid farm built in a reasonable amount of time because I have rambled a ton in this episode and I would like to get farming some of these annoying squids.
block, kelp, sugarcane, sugarcane, block, kelp, sugarcane, sugarcane, block, kelp, sugarcane, sugarcane, block, kelp, sugarcane, squid. I hope you guys enjoyed that impromptu time lapse and singing as well. The squid farm is now more or less completely done, and this took me absolutely ages. This thing is huge, and every single one of these sugarcane towers is like 30 blocks tall. I don't even want to know how much sugarcane I used in the construction of this farm, but I think the finished product is probably worth it. I've been getting a couple stacks of sugarcane, or sorry, a couple stacks of ink sacks from this already, and I'm not even standing in like the most optimal spot, so that is pretty cool. Uh, the last things that I really need to do for this farm is actually install a little bit of an off switch down here. Then I need to set up a proper AFK spot as well somewhere uh, underneath like this uh, storage system, probably somewhere by this tree. Not really sure. I will figure that out later. So something I didn't quite expect is that this squid farm is still fully functional as I'm still standing up at the main AFK spot, which is really, really strange. It's not because of the camera account or anything. Uh, if there's a squid around here, you can see that these guys can't really move, or I guess they can. Strange. I swore that they wouldn't be able to move if I was too far away, but I have no idea. No idea whatsoever. It's still fully functional, though, and we're still getting, like, a ton of ink sacks from it, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what it is? As soon as they spawn in, they they seem to swim in a random direction. We just saw that a couple times, actually, so maybe that's how it's working. Interesting. Uh, the ones that swim upwards or downwards and that just get stuck here, those ones will eventually despawn, but these ones that swim to the sides are actually dying. Oh, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Learn something new every day. I had no idea that when squids spawn in, they actually move to the side a little bit. Cool, so it's not quite the rates that it should be because they can't move at all times, but these guys will eventually despawn, so that's not really too big of a deal. Fantastic, this thing actually will still produce ink as we're standing at the main AFK spot. Oh wow, it's like a proper amount of ink as well. This is from maybe 10 or 15 minutes or so, and most of that time I was working on the farm as you can see, but for my first ever ink farm in Minecraft, like, I'm pretty happy with this thing. No idea it was gonna work the way that it does, but it's, like, actually super efficient. I'm super duper happy with this farm. All right, everybody, here we are. Everything's done. Everything's complete. How does it look? Does it look great? I it love it. Fantastic. You liking it? It is lovely. Oh, wait, you're not, you're not looking that way. Which way are you looking? No, I don't know. I'm looking all around. <laughs> are you looking up? Looking down, I guess the, I should turn around and make everybody yeah. see it, right? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's like a giant amphitheater or something. Yeah, it's really, it's an interesting build, but it looks really nice. It, it's like, would you call it modern? I don't even know. Abstract, I, maybe? Yeah, abstract, kind of. I want to say like alien, but that might yeah, it is a little. <laughs> sound bad. I don't know. It just looks really awesome. It it almost looks like like a rib cage inside Ooh, a creature or something. That is true. A little spooky. Zloy will love it. <laughs> I'm sure he will. So there's not much to talk about up here other than we have this red spot you can stand on, and this is the optimal standing spot to uh, get the witch farms to run. Yep. Witch farms, I don't know, but oh, but um, ching, I had to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's too good to not to not make a pun right. out of. <laughs> And then we've got the bubble columns. We can see all the stuff coming from the witch farm, which it, I love the sound this stuff makes. Oh, there they go. Yeah, they're kind of hard to by. see. They go by super fast. Woo. <laughs> oh, if you have Optifine on and dynamic lighting, the, uh, the glowstone mm -hmm. dust actually lights up. It's really oh, cool. Oh, wow. I'm not fancy like that. <laughs> I wasn't either, but then my tree farm was too laggy, so I was like, I need some Optifine. <laughs> right. We've got this crazy glass block up there because there's a crazy glass block right here because you've done something crazy beneath. You want to show us what you've done down there? Absolutely. We've done a lot of storage down here and you've done a lot of fantastic decorating down here as well. We got like a witch hat going on. And witch then hat. like, yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. I had to yeah. do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and then like the floor you were saying is the witch's hair, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like her gray hair streaky all over the ground. 
I wonder if there's any uh, lice. Probably. No, you just just <laughs> leave it. No <laughs> scratching, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just carefully walk over top, and no one needs to know. <laughs> oh, we could trap some like uh, some endermites beneath, and it could sound oh, like a walk. Oh, that would be terrible. Let's it not would... do that. <laughs> <laughs> you already oh. wanted to get a uh, a witch up here, didn't you? So it sounded yeah, like the witch was talking. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like we're actually standing on top of a witch. You can hear her like. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. We got to do that. We got to do that. Awesome, man. So how long would you say we've been working on this project in total? Um, I'd say probably about five, six weeks. It's been it's been a long, long time. Phantoms! I... <laughs> <laughs> Way to ruin the illusion. <laughs> right? <laughs> Come here, you get smacked. Oh, okay. I'll just okay. let him take care of you. Yeah, but we'll just we'll just stand over on this side. This side's safe. <laughs> yeah yeah i did design it smart enough that you can afk here and not get attacked yeah we got the solid blocks blocks above your head okay so maybe there's some slight kinks to work out with our systems but overall pretty amazing project super happy about this thanks for doing this project with me piggy yeah this is a ton of fun man thanks for all your redstone expertise and thanks for building everything I... like all the decoration i couldn't have done this this is amazing looking Thank i really you. like it and I must say, for some reason, the black concrete blocks, it's like you can barely see them. You seriously can't. It's just, and I'm pretty sure once this goes up on YouTube, the way that they render it, it's just going to be worse. It's like a black void in the ceiling now. You can't even see the edges. All right, cool, man. We'll work the kinks out of this thing, get a few more farms going. This is going to be probably the coolest place on the server to AFK. I think so. This is going to be probably too many farms. It's going to be fantastic, though. See if we can. We, we're gonna stress test and see if we can break everything. Let's we'll see if we can break the server. That's a good goal. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We'll do it before uh, Zoloid does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone's got to do it before him. Uh, right. That's always the good test of like your farming area. Does it break the server? No, it's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So yes, this build is absolutely fantastic. I love this build. Picklesworth did an amazing job. And my favorite thing about it is that like you can stand here, you can turn on your hitboxes, and you can just see all of the items fly up these elevators in the back here. It's really, really cool looking. And I haven't seen storage done like that before. It's just, it's just the coolest thing ever. I love it. <laughs> but we can head down in here and you can see uh, all of this stuff still looking the same. Still need to do a little bit more work around here, but that'll all get done in due time. The last thing I really want to show you in this episode is the sheer amount of junk that I have left over from doing this project, simply because it fascinates me. Uh, I have 27 full shulker boxes full of just random materials and junk that I need to sort out after all of this. Uh, that is going to take a very, very long time. I don't even have like enough inventory room or enough ender chest room to transport that all back in one go. So that's going to be fun to figure out as well. Uh, but I think that that is probably going to do it for this epic episode of Epic Proportions. This mega project has taken me and Picklesworth probably about the last month and a half to actually put together. So I hope you all did enjoy these two episodes that we have done together. Of course, make sure to check out the Picklesworth. And if you did enjoy either of our videos, make sure to show some love and hit the like button because we've put in just an insane, insane amount of time. <laughs> but thank you all very much for watching. Please do let me know your thoughts about this mega project and epic episode down in the comment section. I hope you all did enjoy the time lapses and the derps. I'll see you down in the comments and in the next video. And then there was silence. <laughs>